Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, please keep in mind that this is not specific to anything, love, career, sign, anything like that. This is literally just what Spirit wants to speak with us about today. And with that said, just because this is dated for the 10th of September doesn't mean it has to only resonate on the 10th of September. It, uh, whenever you watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that time. Yes? So a little bit of something cool that I, rec I realized this morning. So as I got up um, and I was, you know, doing my thing, I was doing a little bit of yoga, some stretch, some meditation. I, I realized or I, I recognized how, you know, it's getting ever so much darker, you know, as the days go on from this point on. Well, it's not just from this point, but as time is going on now that we're shifting into fall and all that, the mornings are getting darker. And I that reminded me of when I started morning coffee. When I had started morning coffee last year, it was still like pitch black <laughs> at night, in the morning. Now, I was doing the readings much earlier back then because I was still in school. But then I was like, wait a second, we're probably coming up on the one year anniversary of morning coffee. And I looked um, on my page here on YouTube and um, I looked in the playlist because I do have a, a morning coffee playlist that gets added to every day um, as the readings go up. And I looked and we are in fact coming up on the one year anniversary. I started morning coffee. My fir the, the first morning coffee reading was October 15th of last year, of 2018. And today is September 10th. So we are absolutely coming up on the one year anniversary of morning coffee. That is so incredibly cool. I just really wanted to share that with you guys because I'm actually really excited about it. Just you know, th to think about the fact that I've done a daily reading almost every day, like every weekday. I don't do it on the weekends, but every weekday for the past year almost is really cool, is really, really cool. All right, so with that said, let's get into the energies. Let's get into the message for today. So um, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but the energies, are, I, I'm, it's a little somber right now um the energies are still really heavy <laughs> they're not necessarily as heavy as they were last week i will give you that however it's a very similar theme um and spirit is pointing this out to me they want me to mention this to you but i've actually been using these heavy energies and this heavy period to not only purge but also to practice finding and staying in what abraham would consider the vortex um, and as I'm doing that, I'm recognizing that things are really starting to be redefined for me. Um, I really do feel like that is, that has been the theme of the last few weeks. I want to say since that new moon that we had, that kicked, basically, it didn't kick off Virgo season, but it was towards the beginning of Virgo season. Um, and it was in Virgo. But, um... So as I was channeling and connecting for the day, immediately I saw that the color of the day or the color for the message that's coming through right now, um, and I'm, I, I feel that if you are resonating with this message right now, then in some way you are going through this, whether it's happening on the 10th of September 2019 or not, okay? So the color for the, for the moment, we'll say, the color for the moment is green. Uh, which to me is representing the heart chakra. And as I was channeling through that, I was listening and I was hearing uh, heart chakra cleansing, um, clearing, uh, clearing out the gook, clearing out the muck. Um, I know personally I'm going through that physically even. Um, I have made certain changes in my life right now that I am actively following through with more than just for an egoic reasons like literally like i'm energetically like i'm still following through with it and my <laughs> there's a cleansing a clearing going on of my 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 lungs my physical lungs like i have this this it's on my right side i guess there was this pocket of icky pocket of ickiness 
that was just kind of stuck in there that's now has a chance now that I've made this these changes in my life it has a chance now to work its way out okay so I'm dealing with that physically at the moment um, but then you know there's a purge there's a cleansing of the heart um, and there and what I'm feeling is like you're clearing out we're, we're clearing out the old gook the old muck we're working on getting down to the bottom of well, no, we're working on getting back to the purity of ourselves, of who we truly are. And as this time period has been going on, I've been noticing that um, I've been basically systematically following my timeline back and back and back to the past and systematically clearing things or cleansing things or facing things associated with certain times in my life. It started... Um, a few months ago, it started over the summer with clearing aspects of um, my twin flame journey. So I came in contact with, started working with someone um, and felt a spark in a similar way that I did to the individual that I called or considered. And yes, fine, I'm still under the impression that is my twin flame. Um, even though I'm not, I'm not pursuing that. I'm not giving that any more real thought or energy. I'm really staying as disconnected as I possibly can and working on healing myself. Um, this individual, well, that I consider to be my twin flame that I'm constantly told still is. My <laughs> they literally just said it again. It's fine. It doesn't matter. But um, this summer, I started working with someone, and there was a dynamic that was very similar very very like almost scarily similar to the twin flame catalyst situation and i call that a catalyst because it did whether he actually is my twin flame or not he in truth it really, it really doesn't matter um but he catalyzed a lot he he really pushed me into where i am right now which is beautiful um and i did get a reading lately about the twin flame journey and i was told and i got it from emily of um indigo moon's healing who i love she's fantastic i just i resonate with her so hard with her it's ridiculous but um she mentioned to me that he basically came in to help clear out a lot of karma and i really do believe that i recognize that now because this summer i dealt with a situation in which like I said, someone came. I, I came in contact with someone, and the situation was extremely, like, eerily similar. I cleansed that. I, I, I recognized the pattern there, and I removed myself. I was able to like work my way out of that. Literally, right after that, I came in contact with someone that helped me clear away the energetic pattern that was um, left over from my ex-husband, who was right before the twin flame. Um, and I was work, able to work my way out of that. Now, ever since, I have been systematically going back and back and back and reliving or remembering certain things almost in a chronology. It's, it's so, it's really interesting how that's happening right now, okay? And so that is my personal take on what's going on energetically. Um, hopefully you'll find some sort of resemblance or resonance with that. But as I was shuffling then through that, the sun came out. And it really wasn't, there was really nothing else coming out other than that. Um, and I was just trying to pull and see, and it's just, and well, first of all, the first thing I heard when this, when this card came out was um, that song, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. So we're still in the process, just like the clouds in the Lenormand deck, which has been coming out. And that's what inspired me to sing that song to begin with. The clouds are, are parting. OK, the storm is moving out. It's clearing up. It's dying down, whatnot, whatever. We're in an energetic space right now where we are able to work our way out of the storm that we may have worked ourselves into. OK, the sun is coming out. Clarity. And, and the one word that I heard with this card was optimism. OK, the universe Spirit is literally, for those of us that are really in the trenches right now, is, the spirit is really trying to, is working very hard. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be very honest with you. It's working very hard to help us stay optimistic. 
<laughs> throughout all of this because this is really an extreme moment. This is an extreme time for a lot of us where a lot of our traumas are surfacing and we're being faced with it. And there's no running away from it. There's no turning back, especially if you've really been on this journey of self-discovery here with the hermit being in our overall energy. Um, you know, if, if you've really been in this process of, of going through this journey of inner discovery, you've come to a place at this point. If you're resonating with what's going on right, right now, if you're resonating with the message I'm putting forward right now, You've come to a point where there is no hiding from any of this any longer. And it's not even like you would want to hide from it any longer because now you have the foundation to say to yourself, wait a second, I'm being triggered or these things are surfacing, which means that I'm now able to recognize them, be aware of them. I have the opportunity to heal this. So you're diving right in. And the universe is like, Excellent. We couldn't ask for anything more of you. Look at what's on the other side of our overall energy. The Eight of Wands. And it's this side of the deck. I'm not, sorry. I'm sorry. Not the Eight of Wands. The Eight of Swords. But it's, it's really interesting that instead of the Eight of Swords, I said the Eight of Wands. Why? Because the Eight of Wands is about freedom, is about communication, it's about clear and open air. The Eight of Wands is a minor arcana version of the Chariot. And with the chariot, you are balanced, you are whole, you know exactly what it is you want, and you're allowing your emotions, your emotions from a balanced state to guide you. Well, here, this is the Eight of Swords. And it's this side of the, the card where you see how loosely this woman is tied. This, like I said yesterday, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. The, it literally looks like these ropes are just about to slip off of this woman. We are literally untying ourselves right now, guys. That is what's happening. And we are creating the freedom for ourselves to fly like an eagle. Fly like an eagle. That eagle was on the Eight of Swords because the, cl the clouds are parting. Yeah? This is beautiful energy, you guys. I know it's heavy. I know it sucks. I know I feel like I want to cry. I mean, a lot of this has to do with self-worth. Not even going to lie. I mean, it literally has everything to do with self-worth. Because all of the stuff that we're clearing out of our heart chakras right now that have been holding us back has been a product of disbelief and unworthiness or feelings of unworthiness, doubt. Beautiful energies. All right. Let me give this one cleansing shuffle. <laughs> and then we're going to get going. You see, you see the fool right here? And the tower is right there with the eight of cups right there. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, guys. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, we're going to give this five shuffles, guys, and then we'll see what we've got for today. For our Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. This is three. Four and five. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, five. Here we go. All right. All right, kids, let's see what we've got. 
Best messages, please, spirit. There, there's some already. Eyes are closed, so I can't see. For Tuesday, September 10th. Best message, please, spirit. Yeah, we're going to stop there. Okay. Overall energy, we do have the King of Cups with the Ace of Pentacles. King of Cups. Ace of Pentacles. Okay, we have the Five of Wands in reverse. Oh boy, we have the King and the Queen of Swords. We have the High Priestess. We have Justice, which is in reverse. We have the Nine of Pentacles. And there we go. Five of Pentacles. There is that energy of unworthiness. You know, the interesting thing about this Five of Pentacles here is this time you're inside the church. You're in the sanctuary. And coupled with the Five of Wands, which is in reverse here, I'm feeling an energy of giving up the fight, releasing any sort of inner conflict, inner turmoil. This, oh wow, this literally can be looked at as being in the vortex. Now, this combination, okay, with the Five of Wands in reverse, and the Five of Pentacles, but the, this side of the card being inside the church. And you see how this guy is kind of like holding his head, like trying, it's almost as if it feels like this individual is trying to get a hold of their thoughts. You can see being in the church or being in the temple, whatever, whatever you want to call it, as being in the vortex. That's kind of what I'm seeing here. And working on, working on getting your thoughts together Clearing, clearing all of the stuff that keeps you feeling burdened, bogged down, all of the disbelief. Um, yeah. We have the High Priestess here. And again, it's the side of the card where, you know, we, have, we are behind the veil. We have, I guess you can say we have pierced the veil here. We have been allowed passage by the High Priestess by the universe to start looking at some of these things now. Whatever has been hidden from us. I just heard the goal is to clear all the superfluousness away. Nine of Pentacles for sure is a fabulous energy. Independence, strong, strong willed is what I heard, okay? You have the justice. Justice is in reverse though. It is the best, the, the, the better side of the card, I guess. I mean, not. Well, I would say that this one, this one has a better side of the card here because on this side is where we deal with a mitt just running amok, right? Justice, this is the, I see this side as a, as a side of injustice. Here, this is the side of justice, but it's reversed. And, and I'm getting that it's blocked right now. I'm feeling like the justice that this represents here is the big change in your life, is what you're working on clearing the, the cobwebs from, is what you're working on clearing away the thought patterns, the belief systems, is what you're working on being in the vortex about. Now we have the king and the queen of swords. We also have the king of cups. The King of Cups and the Queen of Swords has their back to turn, backs turned. I'm getting a very strong emotional energy. Um, and it's strange because I'm getting a strong emotional energy from the Queen of Swords too, which... But what I'm getting is that the, the energy is so strong, the emotion is so strong that it's actually affecting the Queen of Swords aspect. And I, I almost feel like her back is turned for <laughs> the safety of others and the safety of her own self. This could be the fact that you might be ready to just chop the heads off of everyone. 
for no real given reason other than the fact that you're just fed up. Now, the other thing that I'm seeing about seeing in this is that the king and the queen are facing each other and kind of like communicating with each other. I do feel like the queen has her back turned right now because she's just so... She's just so ready to tear everything down that it might be some overzealousness. It might be a little overly destructive. And so the king is kind of like, hold on, just let me handle this. Okay. Let me be the interface. I'm not asking you to leave. I'm just saying, like, talk to me through this. We can work on this together, but let me, let me, let me, let me be the interface right now. Let me deal with What's going on here? I still want your input. But even the queen of sort, even the queen energy recognizes where she's, I want to say a little bit out of sorts or a little bit out of her element because literally she's just ready to tear everything down. And that's not the best idea here. So <clears throat> what I feel like is happening here is there's definitely communication going on between the king and queen energies within you. King and queens, king and queen of swords, right? The queen is kind of voicing her opinion. I, I, I want to say in some cases, she, cases, she's voicing her fears. She's voicing her apprehension, her... I think you get what I'm saying. She's 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 letting her position be known. And the king is kind of taking that into consideration and is saying, okay, how do we handle this in the best way? The king of Cups energy. I'm hearing emotionally unavailable. And maybe you need to be emotionally unavailable right now. The only individual you really should be available for is your own self. And that's why I feel a similar energy between the King of Cups and the Queen of Swords. Both backs are turned. Both are going within, I want to say. Both are keeping to themselves because I do feel like both of them could lash out in some ways that are really, really not cute, not beneficial. But then on the other side of that, we do have the Ace of Pentacles. So I almost see it as the King of Cups is looking towards his ace of pentacles is focused on the ace of pentacles is focused on the brand new life there is a there is definitely an energy of of emotional responsibility so the reason i think it's a really good a really good thing if you are in this energy of feeling maybe feeling super emotional and really not wanting <clears throat> not wanting to interact not wanting to be seen, I guess. <clears throat> if you're pulling away from people right now, it's probably a really good thing for you to do. You might be feeling emotionally drained. You might just feel energetically exhausted. People might be exhausting you right now. You may be seeing people in a different way, like people that you that may have been really close to you at one point. Um, you may be seeing them in a different light. You, their energy, the, I feel like there is, there is an energy of feeling drained from the people around you who are still kind of three-dimensionally focused. And a lot of this has to do with your change in perspective. We don't have the hanged man. I think the hanged man did come out yesterday. We'll see if it comes out in the clarifiers, but. I do feel like justice is coming. Definitely. It's just uh, on hold, on, de on delay. There's a little bit of a blockage here, but I do feel like you are in fact working through these blockages for sure. What's under the King of Cups? Oh, the sun again. Yeah. <laughs> the, 
the sun is under the king of cups again. But you see, it's the, this, it's the other side. It's the side where we're cordoned off. We're behind walls. There's some confinement here. If you are feeling... If you are feeling like you need to be in your shell, you need to be in hermit mode right now, by all means, follow your intuition there. Absolutely. Because I really do feel like this is, it's almost as if this is like a, a butterfly in a cocoon stage, for sure. You're, there is a lot of inner work being done and it, and, and it seems redundant to say that because we've all been doing strong inner work for the longest time. But right now, again, yeah, Spirit just said deep excavation and that's what we were talking about yesterday. Deep excavation. Deep. I mean, like deep. It, for some of you, this is even centuries worth. You may be purging some stuff from past lives that you weren't able to be aware of. <clears throat> and it's funny because I say past lives, but it could literally just be the past in this life, which was a completely different life. You were a completely different person then to the person you are right now. And because of that change that you've made, because of that new person you've become, because of the fact that you've been walking the path of inner discovery with the hermit card that came out in your pre-shuffle, this is absolutely why you are able to face elements of your past in a different way and cleanse them, clear them, write a different story now change the narrative, change the story, or write a whole new book for yourself. It's kind of what that feel, this feels like. And you know what? To be quite honest, that could absolutely be what this justice is. <clears throat> there are a lot of backs turned here. But I just feel like that is an element that is re re reflective of going within. Okay. And with this King of Swords energy here, you do, I mean, you are, you're still facing the world. Don't get me wrong. All right. But you're facing the world from a cold-ish, clear-cut, logical, judicious, point of view. I mean, this is, this is very, this is very, very mature here, you guys, this King of Swords energy. This is the, this is the face. This is who is facing the outside world. And this is extremely mature. Okay. This is very good. Diplomatic even. Like, look, I don't want to hurt you. I'm not trying to hurt you, but you need to understand I am not the one right now. <laughs> it's kind of what that feels like. All right. So we're going to get into the clarifiers. And I want to start by clarifying judgment in reverse with the nine of pentacles here. Something is definitely coming. And, and it's funny. And what I'm hearing with this between the Nine of Pentacles and Justice, I literally just heard, you, you are, or, as, and, I, and I just heard it this way, we are long overdue for this. Whatever this Justice is, we are long overdue. But that's okay. Just stay in your Nine of Pentacles state. Stay in your abundance, stay in your autonomy, stay in your independence, stay in your sovereignty, because this can't be kept from us forever. Justice will be served. It's only a matter of time. And you can look at it this way. The longer it's held back from you, the bigger it could be getting. The more value it could be generating. It's in escrow is what I'm hearing. And don't things build over time in escrow? Is that how that works? I'm not too sure. But I think that's what that feels like, right? Last shuffle. And then we're going to see what this is. Let's get some clarity on this, please, spirit. 
justice. What can you tell us about it? What is it? You know, that sort of thing. Justice in the reverse with the Nine of Pentacles. Just heard it's in escrow again. Oh, the devil in reverse. Look at that. Hold on. Oh. The Three of Cups. There it is. The Hanged Man. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yup. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh, boy. Overall energy is the Six of Cups. I love the way the Six of Cups is depicted in this deck. This is the wild unknown tarot, okay? And it's, a, it's depicted as a tree with all of these roots. Now that can represent longevity, I just heard that. So yeah, it can represent that, but it can represent nostalgia. It can represent the past. It can represent your childhood. It can represent, it could represent your soul, right? Because your soul, like you can look at all these roots. You could think of these roots as all the different lives and experiences your soul has had and the tree that grows from it, the wisdom, the experience. This is your lineage, I just heard. Okay, this is a God-given right. Again, this can't be held from you forever. Whatever this is. Okay, and now, here, this is what I was saying though. Here is the hanged man. Here's that hanged man energy. This is your change in perspective, okay? And what I'm getting with that is there is definitely a need to, for this change in perspective to really take hold before you can really receive whatever this justice is. And that's what we're going through. We're going through a time period right now where we are releasing the, the conformity. Here's the devil in reverse. We're releasing the conformity. We're releasing the chains. We're releasing the ties. We're releasing the beliefs that keep us in this lack mentality okay we're releasing the inner conflict releasing the inner conflict all right we have a whole mess of cards here i do want to point out though this is this is going this is our clarification i'm not going to be pulling any more but i do want to point out that we have the emperor and the empress this is the balance between masculine and feminine we have the king and the queen of swords. The balance between masculine and feminine. These two are, in fact, working together. All right. It may be new. Sure. Okay. It's new to us, to some of us. This is a new thing, but it's still happening. You have the ten of cups. Yo, so four of pentacles, three of cups, the moon, then we have the fool, <laughs> the fool, the page of cups, the ace of wands, the hermit, and the world. The world and the fool with the hermit. Okay? And it's definitely <clears throat> a progression like this. The hermit is the card of the path of self-discovery which leads to, to the completion and the closing out of cycles, which leads to the beginning of something brand new. Page of Cups, Ace of Wands, or in this deck, Daughter of Cups. A new emotional reality, a new start, a new lease on life, a new way of seeing things. Getting back to your sense of innocence. Could even be seen as with the Six of Cups, getting back to your inner child. The moon, the four of pentacles with the three of cups. The emperor, the empress, ten of cups, the t hanged man, and the page of swords. The moon, the four of pentacles, and the three of cups. Um, I, th 
think I want to pull some more for that actually, but I'm going to use another deck. This this uh, this page of swords energy with the emperor, the empress, the hanged man, the ten of cups. I might want to get a little bit more on that too. I'm not really sure. What I'm getting for this so far is just seeking an understanding. Seeking wisdom, seeking guidance. Um, I, I, this feels like an internal seeking, but see, trying to fig, trying to find the change in perspective. I guess you could you could totally, that's that's what I'm getting here. Trying to find I, I want to say trying to find the ten of cups, but it's more about it's it, you found the ten of cups internally. It's really just being on the lookout for the, I don't, um, that one's hard to describe. It is, it is working on also continuing to understand and find the, the 10 of cups energy within. That's really what I'm getting here. Even though you've found some semblance of it, I'm just seeing the page of swords as an energy that's sweeping through the internal reality, looking for more of the discrepancies trying to find more a deeper sense of this change in perspective okay three of cups four of pentacles and the moon i want to get some deeper clarity on that so we're going to use the golden universal tarot here What I'm kind of getting right now is that you need to be hunkering down with this Four of Pentacles energy, um, saving your space, maybe saving your money, um, being grounded, working on staying solid and secure. Three of Cups um, is giving me a soul family energy, star family star uh, uh, energy. It's also giving me an energy of communication. I, I feel like, especially with the moon here, um, things are not as they seem. There is an energy of, like I'm feeling a shift, a phase where things are a little bit darker. Things are not quite as they seem. Um, and you're needing to just, whoa, seven of swords. Yeah, Nine of Cups in reverse, Page of Pentacles. Ah, Knight of Pentacles also. Nine of Cups in reverse was saying to me that, you know, that's the satisfaction. That's the wish fulfillment. Um, Page of Pentacles is the new start, the new reality having to find your footing here. I think some of you may be deceiving yourself in terms of whether or not this is actually gonna work or this is actually gonna come, come through or anything's actually ever going to really change. Um, you're in a little bit of a dark period right now. This might be This might be a bit of a dark night of the soul. Yeah, it sure is, the tower with the four of swords. We need to just relax. We really need to just chill. with the King of Wands underneath that, speaking to um, masculine energy. There's a lot of masculine energy here between the King of Cups, King of Swords, and now the Queen, of, I'm sorry, the King of Wands. Um, the, there's a lot changing. There's a lot changing. I still don't quite understand what this Three of Cups energy is trying to say. Communication is what I was getting with the Three of Cups. Um, okay, all right. So what is needed right now is we need to rest. We need to chill. We need to relax. Rest as much as you possibly can. And I mean it. I'm, look, look, I mean it. 
rest as much as you possibly can. Do not allow yourself to say you're being lazy or to fall into the, the self-deprecation because you're resting. Absolutely not. Rest as much as you possibly can and work on communicating with spirit. That's what the three of cups is. That's why I'm getting, um, I'm getting soul family. I'm getting guidance. I'm getting star family, star seeds, whatnot, whatever. Work on staying grounded. Work on maintaining your security in life right now. Physically work on maintaining your, do what it is you need to do to help yourself feel safe, secure, and calm, four of pentacles. Because shit is shifting and changing, y'all. The moon. God, I wanna pull again, I'm sorry. Like, I totally lied to you guys today. I said that I, was only, I wasn't gonna pull any more with the first clarification deck, and now I'm still, I, this is, y'all. Okay, I mean, this literally is going to be the last pull from the tarot because this is the, this is the last tarot deck I have on my desk right now. <laughs> I just feel like got being, I'm feeling guided to pull more. It's, I'm hearing the guidance is necessary. All right, one last shuffle. And then last bit of guidance here, please, Spirit. In terms of all of this change that's happening. Last piece of guidance here, please, Spirit. And then we're going to close the reading with our Oracle guidance. Just the last bit, please, Spirit. Last thing you want to say through the Tarot. The Knight of Wands. There's something else underneath that. Ooh, ooh. Okay. The Ace of Wands came back out again. All right. The world. Excellent. End of the reading. Ace of Wands. Excellent. Ten of Swords. Knight of Wands. And the Four. Again, the Four of Swords. With the Two of Cups underneath the deck. Some of you need to hear this, but the Two of Cups is representing a relationship for some of you. For some of us. For many of us, actually. Um, we know, Spirit is saying, Spirit is saying, we know that you want to rush forward right now, but now is not quite the time. Now is the, look at how contradictory that is. Four of Swords with the Knight of Wands. But what I'm getting with the Four of Swords and the Knight of Wands is that, um, you need to allow this to build. You need to allow the momentum to build. You need to allow the fire to build. Okay, if you're being inspired towards something new, Ace of Wands, and that really doesn't have to have any real sort of tangible uh, uh, structure to it, okay? But if you're, and, and, and this inspiration could be just moving in a brand new, completely new direction in your life, you, don't, you may not even know what that is even right now, but you feel, you feel something new building, growing, budding, something is new, okay? What you're needing to do right now, because this is happening in the face of some strong endings, Ten of Swords and the world, okay? And what is budding, what is coming out, what is new is in relation to all of the things that you're leaving in the, behind in the past. So all the clearing, all the healing, all the cleansing that you're doing, this is giving birth, giving rise to something new. Ace of Wands came out twice. All right. Um, so right now, what you're needing to do is just chill. Just rest on it. And allow the momentum, allow the energy to just build. Until it gets to a point where now you are starting to get specific action to take. Then take your action. But don't rush this. Please do not try to rush this, okay? Do not fall back into the old paradigm of like, okay, well, I gotta, do so I gotta do something about it now. No, you don't. You don't have to do anything about it until you're ready to do something about it. Last card that fell out is the Seven of Cups in reverse. And you see where it fell? On the Devil in reverse with this King and Queen of Swords. There's no confusion, or at least you're working on dealing with the confusion for sure. 
That's your focus right now. Ridding yourself of confusion and of fear and anxiety, okay? So now we're gonna close the reading with some oracle guidance from the dragons today. Last shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got. Oracle guidance from the dragons today. Please spirit, just to close our reading. There it is. Oh look, deep blue dragon. <coughs> it's really interesting how the same messages keep coming out in these decks. <laughs> between, between the crystal mandala and now this one. I mean, all right, anyway. But honestly, this is perfect. Deep Blue Dragon keeps you safe by clearing your pathway. Trust that you are protected. Walk on a path of light. I believe this is a fifth dimensional. Yes, fifth dimensional dragon. Deep blue, oh, this is so perfect, you guys. Deep blue dragons work with Archangel Michael, the angel of strength and protection. Dragons can delve into deep, dense matter in a way that angels cannot. They can clear and transmute lower frequencies up to one kilometer around those they work with. These frequencies may be our emotions and thoughts or the emotions and thoughts of people in our vicinity. Many of us are very sensitive and do not realize how much the vibrations of others impact on us. Every time we walk in a crowd, we are in a sea of mixed energies, and these deep blue dragons are master clearance experts. They blow away the foggy vibrations, and then Archangel Michael can more easily connect with us and place his deep blue cloak around us. The guidance here is, this card is suggesting that you call on the deep blue dragons to protect you or your loved ones. Visualize a protecting army of deep blue dragons gliding in front of you wherever you walk or drive. Let them precede you into your home or office. Ask them to dive into the ground below your house to consume all lower energies. Ask them to keep an area of a kilometer around you totally clear. Relax and trust this is happening. Because the deep blue dragons are transmuting the lower emotions of those in your vicinity, you are no longer moving through the dense energies of other people. Notice how much lighter and happier you feel. You can serve the planet by asking deep blue dragons to dive under your shopping mall, schools, build, big buildings, or anywhere you feel they are needed to consume dense vibrations. But also what I'm feeling is that these, these dragons can help you with your own cleansing, <clears throat> as well as Archangel Michael. It may, you may want to work specifically with the dragons to clear out some of the deepest parts of this situation for you. And then allow Archangel Michael to come in and place the shield, the barrier, to protect you from these energies moving forward. All right, guys. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you have a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.